Two, one. Hey, my name is Dave Hendrix. I was born in 1987. It should have made me five years old the day that my parents started what was then called Crystal Tabernacle and now we all know as Crystal Church. In 1992, God called my father into ministry because then, of course, as a pastor's kid, you know what they call PK, I then grew up in ministry. But, um, you know, my parents prayed for me probably from the age of 10 or 11. I was playing in the band at church with Pastor Lester, Pastor Regan Stanton at the time, um, playing with, still, still playing bass and, you know, everyone's still here. Um, at some point, I was involved in the camera crew uh, with, uh, you know, just with the different teams. Uh, but, you know, there's a difference from growing up in church and knowing about Jesus and actually having your own encounter with Jesus, right? I then gravitated towards doing my degree in theology, my bachelor's in theology. And in June of 2010, I'll never forget the World Cup was happening out here in South Africa. But in June of 2010, I was in an, in an arena in, the, in New York City um, called the Izod Arena where they play basketball, but there was a conference happening there, a youth conference, and I've shared my testimony multiple times, and you know, I don't really go into the detail of that testimony, but needless to say, in that conference, there was one of the nights where I had an encounter with God, right? And it almost feels like God opened up my brain and just poured it, all this information, all these ideas, all this creativity in my mind while I was standing in the middle of that conference, in the middle of 16,000 people, 17,000 people, I can't remember the number at the time, but it was a full arena full of people. And that's where God poured this idea into my mind that one day I want to see 17,000 people worship like the way I saw it in New York. And so with, armed with that newfound purpose, that newfound excitement, that newfound zeal to win souls for God, I came back to Crystal Church. I call it Kingdom Generation. We shut the enemy down, no hesitation. I don't know if Jay will remember that track. This is Kingdom Generation. We shut the enemy down, no hesitation. This is Kingdom Generation. generation. Shut the enemy down, no hesitation. Ooh, no hesitation. God really gave me all these creative ideas. I Immediately within the first two weeks, I implemented drama productions. But how did Factory come about? Factory came about like I'm a PK, right? My dad runs the. You're so PK. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to all the PKs out there. When I was living in America and I saw this conference, I got a youth pastor here flew all the way from South Africa, uh -oh. 16 hours away. The first time I saw LED park ends and the lights changing and smoke machines, I saw elements that churches in South Africa just were not doing. You know, it was something so fresh and so new. His youth group has gone from 80 kids to 800 yeah. every week. Thank you so much for coming through to the factory, man. And all we want to do is say thank you to Jesus. The factory is now officially open for 2014. I need some say that say, thanks. I got hope. No matter what I'm facing, man, it's not over. Needless to say, week after week, that thing was growing by, by about 50 to 100 people every week to the point where almost the whole thousand seater was completely full. <laughs> When you allow the sun to shine through your life, guess what? It will set the out a light. And he'll guide you steps. The Bible says, steps of the righteous man are ordered by God. I greet the state president, President Jacob Zuma. I am here to speak today on behalf of the youth of South Africa. And young people were getting saved week after week. The only reason God will ever elevate you and lift you up is so that you can pour into the lives of other people. You know, we do street activation work. Right now we're reaching over a million people, potential listeners, and uh, so excited to have my boy right here, Xavier with me. But there was one challenge, however. The method in which we were doing ministry was too far ahead of its time. And, and Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, woman, uh, uh. Can, 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 can you get me some water, please? And needless to say, I took a lot of backlash. Before the foundations of the earth, I knew you. God has a plan for you. You have a gift inside of you, and he wants to use it. Fast forward to 2013, we were having conferences at church. Um, it was called Sold Out. There was this saying I always used to like saying, I'm 100% sold out for Jesus. So our conference number one was called 100% Sold Out. And then year after year, the sold out conferences at Crystal Church, it grew to a point where the church got more full every single year we did it with just 
activations happening in the foyer. I'll never forget there was a time we had a whole, uh, I was trying to recreate the Garden of Eden in church with real animals, live animals right here in church. There was a time I was recreating a car accident and I had cars with broken glass and everything in church. Just so happens that even up until in Namibia people were speaking about it. Botswana people were speaking about it. Zambia, there were, there were guest artists here from Zambia. People were hearing about what we were doing here. The fire of God was like really on some different level. Come on, come on. We thank God for the anointing on Pastor X Life. One more time, clap your hands for him once again. He's not playing with this thing. He loves young people and he loves the Lord. And everywhere he go, he changed lives. So fast forward to 20, in 2013, I meet my wife because she came to one of the conference and that's how I met my wife in 2013 because she was from Namibia and she heard about what we're doing. And obviously when I saw her, I knew, okay, this is gonna be my wife. And we just, you know, kicked it off from there. In 2014, we were only dating a year. In 2014, we got married and beautiful wedding out in Cape Town. And then in 2015, we had my eldest daughter, Ava. 2017, we had my second daughter, Taya. And you know, that's where God has brought us. And then 2020, I still had this vision burning in my heart to see 17,000 young people worshiping. And I just knew that this is the time, my 10 year anniversary in ministry, that we need to get this done. I took a big step of faith and I booked the ticket pro down. And we put down the deposit, we started selling tickets to the point with a quarter of the venue was already sold out. And then of course, you know, our president called a family meeting and we all know what happened from there. Um, the lockdown situation happened and all that happened. And unfortunately, <clears throat> that, that vision and that dream couldn't go full cycle then. I guess, you know, God understands why and He knows why. Now listen, I've seen God take us from moments where we didn't know how we're gonna get through to moments where we thought we were about to lose everything. I've seen everything God has been doing for the past 32 years. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you. I can see even since the foundation of Crystal Church where they started at Dr. Carl and Pastor Joan from on the stoop, moving into the classroom, moving into the tent, moving into a thousand seater, moving into this auditorium. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. The foundation is so strong. Imagine, you know, you can only go high with a strong and deep foundation. The favor of God is upon you. But I'm here to let you know, God, woo, I like this, is still a God of miracles. God has allowed me to achieve a lot of interesting things over this, over my past 14 years in full-time ministry. But my success is not only based on outside of the spiritual side of things and the fact that God has allowed a lot of what I was able to achieve. It's also that I have a good mentor. I have a good leader. This is not just my spiritual father, it's also my biological father. And I stand on the shoulders of true leadership. I stand on the shoulders of 32 years of hardship, 32 years of toil, 32 years of building leaders, 32 years of pioneering, 32 years of growing, 32 years of just breaking the boundaries, pushing the barriers. And so there lies the mark of a true leader. And a true leader is someone who has what we call vision. And vision, the very definition of vision is to be able to see ahead, to be able to see the treacherous terrain that lies ahead where others cannot see. So when I stand on my father's shoulders, I'm able to see further. All glory goes to God and all accolades goes to my mentor, my spiritual father, my biological father who taught me, who raised me, who taught me everything I know about preaching, who taught me everything I know about homiletics, exegeting, uh, leadership, all these elements that, you know, over the years I've, I've become accustomed with is because I was taught this by my mentor, by my father. I'm looking forward to seeing people storming through those doors week after week. I'm looking forward to seeing encounters week after week. I know that the people will experience the grace of God. I know that this community will be touched out of this church. I know that South Africa will be touched out of this church. And this is what I'm looking forward to seeing, what God is capable and able in doing, not just in my life, but in your life. And I know that God is gonna do it for you, for me, for the leadership of Crystal Church, for Dr. Carl, for Pastor Joan, for all the leaders, the board of directors, every member of this church. I know God is gonna take us from strength to strength, from victory to victory, from every person 
that God has placed in this house which is called Crystal Church.